Hey there, welcome back to Coding Stuff and in the previous part I have showed you the demo app that we will be creating and also I talked about what architecture is, what MVVM architecture is. So yeah, if you haven't watched that video, uh, link is in the i button, go check it out. Okay, and in this part we will add the architecture components or uh, dependencies that we will be using and also we will prepare our layout. So first of all, uh, I have created this empty project and I have added these three colors. You can copy the hex code. So it is FF9900 and this is FFB546 and this one is 854F00. Okay. And then what we'll do, uh, we'll click on this Gradle script and this second one build.gradle app level. And in here we will copy the dependencies. So just uh, open your Google Chrome or any other favorite browser and then search adding architecture components Android and click on this first link which is developer.android.com and then uh, we will be requiring this uh, lifecycle component library that is view model it will include a view model and also we will require this room so first click on the lifecycle components So then uh, we'll copy these two lines, a lifecycle version and architecture version. So control C and open your Android studio. We'll paste these two here. And then, so now we'll copy this uh, live data and view model, both uh, lifecycle components. So control C and we'll paste it over here. then uh, we will copy this annotation of life cycle so just copy this and we'll paste it over here then we'll require the room uh, just click on the back and then hit on the room so yeah uh, room persistent library uh, it provide us an abstraction layer over our sqlite database and it allows fluent database access while harnessing full power of SQLite. So yeah, it's always good to use a room because you know it has some benefits. Like um, so, one of the benefit uh, of room persistent library that I like most is it provides and compile time verification of SQL queries. So earlier, um, you know, we have created few tutorials on SQLite database. And also we have created one project using SQLite database that is to do list app. If you haven't watched that video, link is the i button, go check it out. So yeah, if, if we don't uh, use room persistent library, we need to create a SQLite open helper class to handle the database operations. So yeah, in there, um, if you made any typo error in SQL queries, the app would be still running, the app would be still working, but when that query will run that app will be crashed that app would be crashed so to avoid that uh, runtime crash we use room persistent library because it provides and compile time verification of sql queries so yeah if you made any type of mistake of uh, because of room persistent library we will know at that instant time so yeah to use this library we need to copy this first so control C and I'll paste it over here. Then we'll copy this too and we'll paste it over here. So then uh, I'll hit on the sync now. I can close the crow. So yeah, this is the UI that we'll be creating and yeah, I'll use this flash screen. Uh, I'll suggest you to create your own flash screen. It's so simple. It's just one text view with 50 uh, text size and you know the bold and the color, color is full black and this color as I mentioned already, this is FF9900 and this one I have added one eclipse and the dimension as you can see here and this color is ffb546 so yeah i have exported this 
so I'll just copy this control C and in our drawable I'll paste it over here okay so our project has been successfully synced now I'll just close this and uh, we'll create a new activity so hit on your package name sorry so hit on your package name new and select M empty activity and we'll name that activity as splash activity In here we'll write background as our splash UI. Yeah, that's it. And in our splash activity, we'll create one handler. So handler handler equals to new handler and then handler dot post delay. And here we'll pass new runnable. And we need to override this public override uh, public void run method. And here we need to pass another parameter that is the seconds milliseconds, 4000 milliseconds. So our splash screen will display for four seconds. And then here we'll write uh, start activity, new intent, and then splash activity dot this to our main activity dot class. And then we'll write finish. Sorry, finish. Yeah. And in our manifest file, uh, we'll cut this intent filter from main activity and we'll paste it over here. So this flash activity will open first as soon as our app has been installed. So yeah, then we don't need this splash activity now. In activity main, what we'll do, we'll delete this text view we'll add our recycler view so just search for recycler view we'll constrain it both horizontal and vertical in parallel and match constraint height and width both we'll provide it id as recycler view and also will require a fab button so floating action button okay before we need to add one drawable so click on drawable new vector asset click on this clip art search for add select this one we need it in white color So yeah, now we'll drag a floating action button and we need this. We'll constrain it on both sides and we'll provide margin of 16 degree on the both sides. Yeah, and we'll provide background tint of which color? Let me see in colors.xml. So yeah, this one dark O. So dark O. And then apt dot tint. Color white. We need a white color for our fab button. Okay. So yeah, uh, now we will just collect their IDs in our main activity. So we have the recycler view. And then we use a floating action button. So floating action button, name it as a fab. We'll find their IDs. So recycler view calls to find you the ID, r.id. Dot recycler view. And then we have fab button. So find you by ID, r dot id dot floating action button. We'll set some properties to recycler view. So recycler view dot set has fixed size, and we'll pass true here. So true, 
and then the cycler view dot set layout manager new linear layout manager and we'll pass in the context here so this here so now we'll uh, create layout for each item so click on the layouts hit on new layout resource file we'll name it as each item dot xml hit on ok so instead of constraint layout we'll use your card view this one and press alt ctrl l to format the course okay and then uh, this will be wrap content sorry wrap content and we'll provide some uh, we'll provide some properties like margin from the top of 8 dp and then margin from start of 8 dp and margin from end so margin end of 8 dp and also we'll provide some minimum height of let's say 80 dp and card elevation of 8 dp yeah then we'll create one constraint layout so constraint layout and provide match parent match parent both and inside this we'll have text view so text view wrap content and wrap content let's provide id of so the id uh, it will be title tv and then uh, we'll provide text size uh, let's provide some dummy text as a title then text size uh, let's say 20 sp text color should be black and we'll provide some margin from margin from uh, let's say start and margin from start will be 16 dp and margin from the top that will be 8 dp okay and now we'll just constrain this so okay and also we need to add some properties so it, it won't uh, affect other text views so so that is layout constraint horizontal weight uh, this one and we'll provide it as 8 and also we'll need to add ellipse size of end so ellipse size uh, it basically you know it will add three dots if this text view overlaps other text view or other widget so you know what i mean uh, this will add just uh, three dots at the end okay then we'll need uh, another text view it's a wrap content and wrap content let's uh, provide it id as a priority priority tv and let's provide some dummy text it's a one text color should be black text size will be 20 sp 20 sp and let's put it this one let's put it over here constraint it horizontal and to the top 16 and 8 db so text to in here in the constraint layout We constraint its top to the bottom of title horizontal to this let's provide some margin of 16 dp and from top of 8 dp and let's increase uh, its size so just search for text size sorry 
so let's make it 16 sp let's uh, turn to the xml code it would be easy and yeah what again what you can do we'll change the texture to let's say description yeah and we need to change the id so description tv so yeah that's it so that that's it for this part in the next part we'll start to write code so yeah uh, that's it do subscribe and thank you for watching